Well, a very good morning to you all. My name is uh, Peter Robinson, and it's a great delight for me to now be living in Derby and fulfilling the role of Dean uh, of Derby. Some of you may have had the opportunity to view my uh, service of collation, induction and installation uh, just a couple of days ago. But it's very good to uh, be with you all and thank you for inviting me to share the ministry of God's word with you. So as we begin, let us pray. God of stories, breathe into us the truth in your parables. Direct us to search for the treasure in your teaching, that through the blessing of your wisdom, they may live afresh in our hearts. Amen. What do you really want? This is the question many of us are asked on our birthdays or even at Christmas. And in my experience, as the years go on, it's an increasingly difficult question to answer. Think of Solomon at Gibeon. This is a question that God asked the newly crowned king. Ask what I should give you, says God. And Solomon, although young and inexperienced as a king, and you can tell that by the way that he speaks rather naively of his father, the great King David, Ask for an understanding mind to govern the people of Israel and for the ability to tell the difference between good and evil. It would have been so easy for Solomon to have asked for a long life or an abundance of riches or for a successful love life. Instead, he asked for what will be best for the nation. Think of St Paul writing to the church in Rome. I think that this is the question that St Paul was answering in his letter to that young and inexperienced church. What Paul wanted for himself, what he wanted for those he was in ministry with and for those who received his ministry, was a life full of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit at work in each of us, helping us to be in tune with God's deepest desires for our lives and helping us to express them in prayer. It was for a life in which we are secure in our relationship with Christ, so much so that God's promise that all things work together for good for those who love him, becomes a reality. And love is the key. What St Paul wanted most for all the new Christians under his care was that in their experience of God and his love, that they would know that come what may, hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril or sword, they could live with the certainty that they would never be separated from the love of God revealed in his son Jesus. Over the centuries, Christians have answered this question, what do you really want, in very different ways. Many have answered by talking about the deep desire of achieving direct communication with God, of seeing God face to face, if you like. And some have even spoken of having a vision of God. We remember the first beatitude earlier on in St Matthew's Gospel. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Seeing God, having a vision of God became one of the most succinct ways of expressing the deepest desire of being a Christian and as a way of speaking about the goal or destination of the Christian life. But it was more than that. To live with the goal of seeing God and of having a vision of him meant that the destination determined how you got there, the goal of the daily shaped life for the Christian disciple. To live with the desire to see a vision of God meant living in a certain way, putting God first in making choices and taking decisions, in forming attitudes to people and things and to the way that one thought. You could even say that Christianity came into the world to offer human beings a vision of God and to encourage us to pursue that vision in our daily lives. St John the Evangelist speaks of the way that God is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Those who saw God in the flesh saw God the Father. Those who see Jesus Christ in faith, see God the Father. And for us, one day we will see God face to face and we will look into his eyes and we will know that the vision we're given on earth has been fulfilled. This, of course, is the other side of death in the life of the resurrection. But on earth we are called to see God at work in different ways. And this brings us to the Gospel reading, where Jesus 
is helping his closest followers to explore what they really wanted. There was the story of the labourer who was digging in a neighbour's field, and he finds treasure. So much does he desire to possess the treasure that he sells all that he owns and buys the field from his neighbour. He discovered what he deep down really wanted. Something within him told him that this was his heart's desire, and he could do no other than what he did. There was the story of the pearl merchant, with a subtly different message. Whereas the labourer stumbled upon, upon the treasure, the merchant was actively seeking for what he desired most in this world. He finds it, sells all that he has, and buys what he has been looking for all his life. Sometimes we experience our relationship with God as something that accidentally, as it were, unexpectedly happens, something that is given to us when we're not consciously searching. At other times we experience God in the deliberate and intentional effort of trying to discover what is transcendent, what is other to ourselves. A few years ago, one evening shortly before Christmas, I was working at my desk and the phone went. It was someone called Paul. I'm thinking of becoming a Christian, he said. What should I do? It's not often, even as a parish priest, that you get such a telephone call and my best answer in the spur of the moment was, well, why don't you come to church at Christmas? Which he did. He took his decision to become a Christian and was confirmed three months later. He's now exploring a vocation within the Church of England. More often in my experience, people come to church after stumbling, if I can use that word, across God in times of difficulty. At their moment of need, they find that God is there waiting for them. So whether we come to understand what we really want, either by accident or by deliberate searching, we come to share in the vision of God. In the future, yes, but also in this present moment. And this, I think, is what Jesus was trying to impress on his disciples. Jesus was trying to help his disciples to make sense of what it was to see God at work in his world, in their ordinary, everyday lives. The kingdom of heaven. It's the place where God's rule is effective and becomes visible. It is the place where heaven touches earth and illuminates what is good. In the picture of the mustard seed that grows out of all proportion and expectation to the one who sows it, it's there that we see God and his kingdom in situations where hospitality is offered to people of all different nations and races, often coming from small and even invisible beginnings of welcome and invitation. We see God at work when something that is seemingly insignificant becomes something that is great in God's eyes. Now how many of us have taken up bread making during lockdown? Almost every day I pick up on my Twitter feed a picture of somebody's sourdough or other form of bread. A small amount of leaven in three measures of flour produces an astonishing amount of bread. The kingdom of heaven is not so much about growth for its own sake, but about transformation. Leaven changes the flour into something that it could not be without the work of God. As the good fish are separated from the bad, we're reminded that we don't just see God's work in the nice bits or where things are going well. We see God and his kingdom where the good is distinguished for all to see from the bad. In other words, where God judges and where his good work becomes visible we see his kingdom grow. And for us, this Sunday morning, I think that this is where the scribes come in. They are like the householder who brings out of their store treasures old and new. One traditional version of the Bible translates it like this. When a teacher of the law becomes a learner in the kingdom of heaven, he's like a householder who can produce from his store things both new and old. Another translation, more contemporary, says this. Then you see how every student trained in the ways of God's kingdom is like the owner of a general store who can put his hands on anything you need, old or new, exactly when you need it. And we can all remember those types of stores from our childhood. The message of Jesus and his salvation, the invitation to others to share in the gift of the vision of God, must be kept alive generation after generation. 
that is something we each have a responsibility for as members of God's people. The good news of the kingdom of heaven must be repeated and refreshed and we're called to be those who learn the ways of God's work in creation so that we can point others to see God in the midst of everyday life in ways that make sense in today's world. It is as we see for ourselves God at work, as we glimpse the presence of his kingdom, so we are renewed in the vision of God that we have already been given, and so we continue to allow God to shape our lives according to his vision. As we celebrate God's presence in our lives and amongst us in our worship this morning, let us pray that God may reveal to each of us the deepest desires of our heart and help us to understand what deep down we really want. In the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.